Good morning. After reviewing the economic outlook and prospects, the Reserve Bank of India cut the policy rate by a further 25 basis points. This means we have cut interest rates by a total of 150 basis points since the beginning of the accommodative cycle. Our attention in recent months has turned to seeing that this large quantum of rate cuts is passed through into borrowing rates. The introduction of the marginal cost lending rate, the MCLR, since April 1st will help. Our first estimate from the 26 largest banks in the system, accounting for about 83% of activity, has been that since the last week of March, the median overnight MCLR is down by 50 basis points from the base rate and is down by 25 basis points across all tenures. This is important because it means an actual rate cut to the borrower of a further 25 to 50 basis points at least, even before today's rate cut. Put differently, policy action is significantly greater today than just another 25 basis point cut. Borrowing is now significantly cheaper and will continue to do s to get so. To further this process, a major focus of this policy has been to address liquidity issues. After a detailed review and internal discussions, we've brought in significant refinements to our framework, including clearer differentiation between the durable liquidity needs of the system and short-term liquidity needs, indicated an intent to move closer to neutral on overall durable liquidity needs, reduced the MSF rate by 75 basis points, and increased the rate at which banks can deposit at the RBI by 25 basis points so as to narrow the interest rate corridor, reduced the minimum daily maintenance of CRR to 90 percent. All these measures along with the government's actions on small savings rates, should also help continue the process of transmission. In addition to further durable liquidity provision, we have announced an open market operation, a purchase of government securities of 15,000 crores today. The monetary policy stance remains accommodative. Going forward, we will be looking for further monetary room in signs of good monsoon, further readings of low headline inflation, indications of softening in core inflation, and further evidence of transmission of rate cuts. Part B of this policy statement also has a number of reform measures, including continuing opening up of the banking sector, new market instruments such as money market futures, broadening participation in and easing access to markets such as allowing retail customers the ability to trade GSEX and to undertake foreign exchange trades, and strengthening financial inclusion through measures such as improving the business correspondent network. Moreover, in the weeks to come, you will see a fulfillment of our past announcements, including the release of guidelines for on-tap licensing of universal banks, the start of the trading platform for priority sector lending certificates, and the introduction of mobile-to-mobile -mobile transfers to the universal payment interface by NPCL. Finally, the process of cleaning up bank balance sheets is well underway, and I'm happy with the progress made thus far. My colleagues and I, and I will now take questions. Uh, this is Supriya Shinit from ET now. Uh, great to be here at your turf. But I must ask you the first question on liquidity boosting measures. A lot of people believe that you are moving beyond interest rates to do your bit for boosting growth. And there is a change in stance from the RBI. The RBI has always, in its own wisdom, believed there should be a liquidity deficit. You talking about that being reduced to zero. Is this a conscious effort to change the stance that has been over all these years? And uh, how worried are you about the pay panel recommendations? Because you're talking about 100 to 150 basis points impact eventually when that does roll in. Yeah. Um, on the first issue, which is the um, uh, liquidity measures, uh, a lot of our activity on the monetary policy front is driven by the Urjit Patel Committee report, which laid out both a change in the monetary framework as well as a change in how we deal with liquidity. Now. 
given the various measures that have been taken to fix the policy rate at close to the repo rate through these overnight instruments, the need to maintain the system in liquidity deficit no longer is there. Therefore, on a review of how far we had come with these overnight instruments, we decided that it was no longer necessary to maintain that significant liquidity deficit. We could move towards a more neutral position, which is what was announced today. Uh, on the issue of the 150 basis points in the um, – um, Urjit, would you like to comment on that? Thank you. Yeah. <coughs> The, the number in the MPR of 100 to 150 basis point direct impact of the seventh pay commission on the headline inflation uh, is, of course, a projection and an estimate and a mechanical exercise, essentially on account of the adjustments in the HRA that is that will take place eventually at both the central government level and at the state government level. We will refine those projections as more details emerge. Uh, the thing to notice is that most likely the impact of the seventh pay commission on the headline inflation will be considerably less than in uh, than in the previous uh, pay commission and i get i think even from the fifth pay commission because there are going to be no arrears uh, uh, and uh, and therefore uh, therefore the overall impact would be uh, most likely much less uh, than uh, on account of the previous pay commissions. But that number is essentially on account of uh, changes in housing uh, 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 HRA uh, and, uh, and given the weight of, of, of housing in the CPI combined. It's noteworthy that uh, in, in, in previous editions, uh, the impact was felt on the CPI industrial workers where the weight of housing was larger. It was 15.3% and now it's about 10 percent. Uh, so, so that's uh, that's the background to that projection, which uh, which may undergo change as we get more information on both the rollout and the timing. Thank you. Morning, Governor Lata Venkatesh from CNBC TV18. Uh, now you put on your Santa Claus hat for liquidity. Uh, well, uh, how quickly do you expect the system to get into balance or near neutrality? Also, when you say near neutrality. Would it be habitually a minor deficit, or would it be minor deficit, minor surplus? Uh, uh, therefore, would you be okay if call rate on certain days is below the repo rate? What would be the habitual behavior of the uh, RBI? What is the corridor it will move in? Right. If I can add the inflation question as well, as uh, my colleague asked you, uh, you know, this uh, uh, 150 basis points is not factored into your 5% uh, uh, inflation on Jan 17th. Is it factored into the MPR's 4.2% inflation in uh, January 18? It is not. So if it is factored in, we are looking at a very different number. Then what happens to your word accommodation? Uh, how much of the 150 could be durable? Uh, is there any uh, estimate? Yeah. Um, first, uh, on your question on, on liquidity, um, the truth is that the durable liquidity status of the economy will not affect uh, how close the day-to-day -day call money rate is to the policy rate. That is determined by our short-term measures. That will continue to be determined by our short-term measures. And we hope to hug the policy uh, rate as far as possible with the call money rate to hug the policy rate. The Whether we go into a little bit of surplus, little bit of deficit, I think that now is, is actually immaterial. The point is that we're moving towards that. The period over which we move depends, to some extent, on market conditions, depends on the flows that we uh, that come in. Remember, net foreign assets is part of the liquidity move. So we have to work it out. We have to see how this move takes place. Um, all, it, all it means an additional, moving from a 1% deficit to about neutral, means an additional uh, removal of uh, of deficit by about eighty to ninety thousand crores. So we have to see how how much the system can take. That is something we have to figure out. So that's that's precisely. Why? I'll tell you why. <laughs> because it has not been at ninety thousand crore. Your deficit has been one and a half lakh, yeah. two and a half lakh yeah. crore. You may argue it's not enduring or uh, durable. Yeah. But the reality is, for the banks, so it has been two there, and a half lakh. There crore. are a couple of uh, of new. Um, shall we say, uh, sources of deficit that we have to 
look at and see how how permanent they are. One is government balances have increased on average over the year. And second is most recently cash uh, with the public has increased quite a bit. We have to figure out. It's about 50,000 crores in excess, 50 to 60,000 crores in excess from what we were estimating. We have to see how this plays out. So it would be, um, I think, premature to give you a sense of how long it will take us. Uh, uh, again, uh, I mean, we, we're not talking quarters. We're talking a year or two. The question is whether it's a year or whether it's two years by which time we get into neutrality. Ah, the 150 basis points again. Uh, uh, you want another crack at it or shall I take it? No, that's, uh, <laughs> I, uh, no it's correct that uh, neither the... March 17 number nor the March 18 number, uh, and the NPR makes it very clear, does not include uh, uh, the impact of the of the pay commission uh, to that. To what extent this is durable, we have given uh, an estimate of the indirect effects, which are about 40 basis points. Uh, uh, what is mechanical and just an index adjustment, most likely we would look through. Uh, what is impermanent and causes externality for the rest of the CPI, we will have to uh, imbibe that in our uh, projections. We have not done that exercise yet in part because there is a fair bit of uncertainty uh, on, on how this is going to evolve. Uh, so first the government has to come out with what, what actually is going to implement and when. Second, as uh, uh, DG said, uh, it depends on what the second round effects are. If the second round effects are small, we can look through a level shift because it will return to the older levels later. If the second round effects are thought to be larger, we'll have to take action. Um, by the way, on the liquidity move, there is a liquidity move anyway because we have to increase durable liquidity on a regular basis. So we will be injecting durable liquidity anyway. The question is, not only do we have to make that up, but we also have to make up the liquidity deficit. So how long we will take to make up that liquidity deficit, the additional margin, is the response I was giving to you. Pradeep Pandya, CNBC Awaaz or CNBC Bajar. Se. So the first question, you have cut the MSF in the CRR or repo rate, or deep cut in the repo or deep cut in the CRR, which was very hard to believe. So do you उतना ही कारगर होगा या ज़्यादा कारगर होगा आपको लगता है किस तरह से दरअसल मदद मिलेगी क्योंकि MSF पे बहुत ज़्यादा बैंक्स पैसे नहीं उठा रहे हैं तो जो बाज़ार की उम्मीद थी वो कहाँ तक पूरी होगी और दूसरा जो आपने बात कही कि कैश काफी ज़्यादा पब्लिक के हाथ में आ रहा है जैसे कि आंकड़े आपके सामने आए so on the first question, um, you know, uh, has the rate cut been enough? We think it is what is sensible given the uncertainties surrounding the economy right now. But I, I think what was important to focus on is what I started with, that because of the MCLR, we actually already have a rate cut of 25 basis points to 50 basis points before the policy. And as this winds its way through the MCLR, over the next few months, you'll have more of a rate cut. So don't look at it as 25 basis points. Look at the composite of measures. They all add up. And borrowing rates are coming down significantly in this economy. The effects of the liquidity measures will also help. Will also help transmission because banks have continuously been saying it's because of liquidity tightness that we can't transmit. Now we've given them enough liquidity, they have the ability to transmit even more. So my hope is we will see significantly more transmission in the next few months. And we have to be careful, therefore, that we're doing what is appropriate given the state of the economy. On the reasons for excess cash, uh, we're trying to understand it. We see some possibility of, you know, around election time, cash with the public does increase. You can guess as to reasons why. We also guess. Uh, and you see some not just in the state which is going for elections, but also in neighboring states. Um, so there's, there's something there. We need to understand it better. But it is about 50 to 60,000 crores more than we anticipated at this time of year. 
on Panam? Um, we are um, obviously part of the investigative team that is going to look into these matters. Uh, it is important to note that there are legitimate reasons also to have accounts outside. Uh, the, the LRS scheme allows you to take money out. We have to see what is legitimate and what is not legitimate. But that's a process of investigation that will take place. Uh, two questions. Uh, so, uh, in the Urjit Patel committee, there is a phase one and there is a phase two uh, with, with respect to the liquidity framework as well. So, are we have we moved to phase two? Do, we, uh, do you look at the 14 day repo now uh, or will we move to the f uh, phase two very quickly? And my uh, second question is on the banking side. So, uh, in schemes like SDR, so banks invoke SDR and then take over the companies and then they route. Uh, then they probably uh, look for solutions outside SDR. Is that even allowed or is it uh, violating the spirit of the SDR scheme? So no, um, um, let me start with the second question, SDR itself, that we um, have been reviewing the SDR and we uh, uh, offered some uh, revised sort of suggestions to the banks. What's important is that they take over a company when they think that genuinely management change can make a difference. But then when you take over, there's no point leaving control in the hands of the original guys while you're looking for a buyer because that puts the company at risk during that period. So we've asked the, com the uh, banks to take action as soon as they invoke the SDR rather than wait. Uh, and some other measures that, uh, um, that have been suggested by a review of the SDR mechanism. Um, we are seeing more buyers come into the system, but a full-fledged operation of an SDR, I think we are yet to see. So as and when that happens, we will have, uh, we will look at that and take more lessons from this process. Uh, on the issue of uh, uh, phase two, I don't remember phase two of the <laughs> Urjit Patel committee report. Um, uh, so we are still in phase one, uh, to give you a direct answer. What uh, w the changes that we have brought in today uh, is a move towards creating the enabling conditions to move to phase two where the 14-day repo becomes the operating target.